Hello everybody, got a Bose Lifestyle 20 music system on the bench and um, it's full of CDs, there they are, you can see them in their slot, there's a six cartridge uh, CD magazine which is stuck in the unit and um, there's a reason for this is that um, to select the correct CD you can see that there's a, a stack of CDs like in a multi-storey car park, a multi-storey CD park and to pick up the right CD, this carriage here, this is a carriage that goes up and down, up and down in this plane like that, and uh, up, goes opposite where the CD is, and then the other motor shoves the CD out inside this uh, this plate. You can see there's the actual spindle drive for the CD, that uh, plastic thing we bobbed just there. You see that plastic uh, wheel, as it were, and uh, yeah, all sorts of things. And underneath, if I just flip her over, show you. A, what she's got under her skirts, as it were. You can see this is the the uh, the arrangement. This is the arrangement. She's got the electronics over here. Got spindle drive motor. Got various other motors for doing the CD select and to drive the CD in, and then um, the other stuff. Um, but the the main culprit of this is what happens is, and it's very common. And I did um, a video on this like probably four years ago, in which I um, repaired one of these particular mechanisms because what happens is the CD mechanism um, no longer works you can't eject the cartridge and in fact it's often found you the CD is stuck halfway between the two it can't be driven in or out it's stuck in position and the reason is that this this um, channel this um, this carriage that goes up and down to line up as the driver's gone so we've got a breakdown in the mechanical drive of the carriage which drives the carriage up and down to line up with the CD to pull the CD out into the thing and the thing so you play the CD put it away let, let, after you've finished it and then move to another level and get another one right so you see these are stuck in the machine it's making a whirring noise if I just turn it on now uh, if I just put the, the power in when you put the power in this thing tries to park and index itself so you don't have to turn it on it just does it for you he said, come on baby, you can do it. What's gone wrong? Ooh, that's what's gone wrong. There you go. <laughs> my makeshift, I just put my finger on my crocodile clip because my makeshift connection, I won't show you, it's too embarrassing. But you can hear it now. And if we just uh, do a bit of the old zoom action here, I can show you what's going on. You see that kicking there? There is supposed to be a gear on the end of this here shaft. Okay? Drives this, which drives, gets some worm action on the other gears, and then the carriage goes up and down. So it's a very simple fault. You can see it kicking at the moment because I've taken one screw out. There's one screw in the front, a little uh, two millimeter screw. It goes in that hill there. My tweezers are poking at the moment. There you go. You can see it's loose. Can you see that's loose? You can't see that's loose. Can you see it spinning? Right, so yeah, and on there is a, a, an acetal gear, a tiny little acetal gear, and um, it, it cracks open and breaks, and uh, it's no, no good at all. So um, I, <laughs> I said in my last video about four years ago that I would get some gears, and when I went to get some, they're not a standard gear. Trust good old bows, they've. Um, They've decided to make it a custom gear, just to make it more difficult. It's very hard to get hold of Imperial gear, and nobody makes them anymore. Um, but, with the right amount of money, and a drawing, and a bit of calculation, you can... Uh, I'll just turn that off now. You've seen enough of the worry wary action. It's a bit exciting, I know, but, you know, you're going to you're gonna have to... Uh, you're going to have to pop with me turning it off. There you go. So what I've got is I had these made. There you go. That's the thing. That's the thing you need. You need that. Right? So you can see I've had these machined to the correct modulus, 0.36. And uh, yeah, that's the brass uh, equivalent of the plastic, the shitty plastic one that's on the shaft. Now the problem is that acetal is very crystalline and very brittle. And the only thing that's stopping it spinning on the shaft 
Do you know I burnt my finger on my crop clip just then? Um, the only thing that's stopping it spinning on the shaft is the grip of the acetal gear on the shaft. And I don't know what I've done with the old gear. I think I lost it when I drew it, actually. But you get the idea, don't you? Yes, you do. And I've got a bag. I've got bags of these now, you see. So now, if anyone says, oh, I want one, I can say you can have one, right? So, and to make it easy as well, what I've done is I sourced the original Japanese motor to go in there. So these, this is not the, um, this is not one that's been ripped out of a Bose unit. This is, uh, and uh, so I'm probably going to just um, sell them as a complete unit, and you can change the whole thing, because pressing this onto here with a press fit with a brass with a one and a half, it's a one and a half mil shaft with a press fit. You can't press it on because if you press too hard on the end of the shaft to get the gear to fit then you've got a situation where again the shaft pushes through so this is a brand new motor and now we have uh, obviously we've got a plus and a minus so if we, we put this motor in the wrong way around it's no arse about face and the micro inside the unit will think it's pushing the cartridge up in fact it will be going down so we've got to be wary of the rotational direction of this it's a six volt motor Mutaba uh, it's got a grey spot on it I don't know what the significance of the grey spot is but they ain't cheap I can tell you that but they're okay it's whizzy whizzy right so these are pressed on by me in fact um, I've locked these on with lock tight bearing lock not lock tile like you can get from AliExpress the fake lock tight this is real lock tight bearing and stud lock and once that's on there, you're not going to get it off. In fact, I put this one on, or the last one on, and I pushed it on too far, and I went to pull it back, and it had already seized onto the shaft using the Loctite. So, yeah, so I can sell you the gear if you think you can fit it, but I'll take you on and sell you the whole motor assembly, all right? So we're going to look at what to do to get this thing off here. Let's bring it back. There you go. Zoom out a bit. You can see what's going on. What's going on with her? Now... You got this ribbon. You got this uh, FPC flexible printed circuit ribbon. Goes around the corner, and is soldered on with two pins at the back of the motor. All right. Now, if I just turn this around, it's a bit tricky because this is still connected to the uh, to the motherboard, to the mothership. It's still still got its entrails all over the bench. Right. So you can see it now. You can see the back of the motor. I just point to it for you. The connections. One, two, back of the motor. There's a dot on that one. There's a dot. There's the little icon, look. The Mutaba icon is just there. Which is the same as the one on this motor. Right, so I've got the right motor. I'm pretty sure of it. Can you see that there? That Hold on a moment. Duty calls. Ah, that was, that was uh, somebody after one of my new Aptext HD Bluetooth adapters for the Bose system. If you haven't heard the Aptex HD working with the real music source, you're in for a shock. It sounds so good. Uh, right, so anyway, um, the ribbon, the ribbon, the ribbon, ribbon comes around here over the top of the motor. It's doing other things. It's not just for the motor. It's connected to a load of other crap. This is the CD carriage motor um, ribbon, which is in the way, sort of. But you want to be careful. This stuff is um, capped on. It's um, capped on. Yeah, capped on these ribbons. So it is, is a phenol um, plastic, very heat resistant to solder, so you can't melt it very easily, but at the same time, you can rip it, okay? So that's the end of the motor. You can see I'm sort of lifted up, but I've got to unsolder here and here and then flip this bend here, flip that up, and then withdraw the motor from behind. So I'm going to turn my soldering iron on, because I haven't done that already. Now I'm torn now, because if you try and desolder this, uh, and bits of blobs of solder go down into your CD head, you know, it's not going to end very, very happily. It might not. But I'm going to rely on you to decide how to take it off. But I'm going to use, this is what I use, it's the old, and you've seen this about 100 times on the site before, it's the old Kemi wick. It's basically, um, if I just put some, where is it? Where I put some solder on my tip, and uh, clean my tip in my robot pubes. This is just a stainless steel scouring pad from a, actually from the dollar store or the pound shop as they call it in the UK. 
it's not a pound shop anymore because some things are two pounds. You get six of these for a pound. And when they get all full of solder and stuff, you can uh, swap out a new one. And the nice thing is all the solder goes to the bottom. If I whip this out, I'm not sure when I emptied this last. Whoa. You can see that all the blobby action has gone down into the bottom of the pot. So they work their way down as you tickle it. And anyway, you've got your tip. Now if I just put some put that back in the frame of view so you can see it. Right, get on close. Right, we're gonna get close up now. We're gonna get very close up. If this is too boring for you, um, and you're not interested, then you're probably not you're watching the wrong channel, right? Or you can fast forward to what you want to see, but whatever you do, whatever you do, don't lose me a comic because I'm not interested in what you think if you're not interested in my videos. Right, so a bit of smoky smoky action. Now if I just touch this, you watch this, I've got a big blob on my tip. You see it? You see it? Whoosh! Up it goes. And look, look I've got a dry tip now. So that's what it does, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to cut that off because you need to have a fresh end to do this because otherwise obviously that's already been used up as much. I keep this um, stuff in a retirement basket actually, there's a bucket full of this and because of course you've got in there, in wherever it is, I'm so close I can't even find myself, I've lost myself. There you go. So you end up with a bucket full of uh, copper and a bucket full of tin. So yeah, it's worth something. You can see how far that's gone up, miles up the, up the, up the pipe. Right, so I bring this back. Right, welcome back if you fast forward. You hit the FF button. The CFI, can't be interested button. And let's just, uh, so we've got the motor, got the solder. What you could do if you wanted to, and um, I want to because I'm a sad old man addicted to flux, is just put a little bit of um, your favourite flux on there just to make things go smoothly, or should I say, flow smoothly. And then just apply the heat on there, on the ribbon, and hoover up the solder out of that joint. See? Can you see that? Can you see that sucky sucky action going on there? Now if you value your bows, you might want to do this, or you might not. What kind of person you are, I guess. Right, so that one's all released, and then the other one, do the same thing. So I'm going to snip the end off first. Start afresh. Nobody likes a dirty tip. So I give it the tip, and just for a minute, that's the biggest lie told most frequently. <laughs> uh, strike that from the record and leave that in okay now if we just get our tweezers a bit of tweezy action here somewhere there's my tweezers you can might perhaps see whether this is free to move or not okay Okay, so then we're off. There's a little bit of flux on the motor, on the ribbon, so we might give it a wipe over, we might not. Then we can withdraw the old motor. Complete with the, uh, don't know if that's any use to you, whether you want to try and track that down, but I couldn't bloody find it anywhere. It's a Taiwanese version of a Japanese motor. Or is it? It's got the M, it's got the grey dot, look at that. It's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm wondering if the grey dots are an indication of the, the voltage and what have you. That This is the new version. Metal gear running on a, a acetal uh, plastic gear is fine. There's no problems with that at all. We're going to put a little bit of grease on it as well, just to make it uh, run smoothly. Right, it's time to slot it back in. You just um, The moment you'll get from me will have the grey dot at the bottom. The grey dot goes into the lower side of this, so basically 
you need just to put this back. I'll let it focus for a moment. Right, I'm going to stick it back in. So we've got our motor. This is what you get from me. You've got a grey spot which goes at the bottom. Little M in there goes at the top. We just need to drop it into the slot, into its position. And uh, gently manoeuvre, actually. I think it's probably easier to go underneath the ribbon, don't you? Yes. Don't tear your ribbon, is my advice, because it'll be the end of your Bose Music System 20. Music Center, what they call it, what the convoluted title is. Gently maneuver. Get in there, you bugger. I'm doing this so uh, arm's length because it's underneath the camera so you can see. So if you think I'm a right plonker then I've just discovered the gear won't go through the hole. Yes it will, joking. Okay. So she's in there, she's lovely, and then just pull this over the end. Gently, gently, make sure you can see properly. She's in. Just slide the contacts over the end. Well, that one's on. That one bent slightly. It's been bent in transit. Yes, it has. So make sure them stand. Make sure before you put it in there that they're both standing up perpendicular to the surface of the motor. Otherwise, you don't have to, you don't have to straighten them like I do. Are you in there somewhere? Fuck's sake, there we are. Push that on. Push that on, and it's on. Okay, so we're in there. We've got her in. Try to apply some heat. Solder iron's running at 320 degrees Celsius. but you can run hotter if you want to. Solder. Okay. So the motor is now soldered back into position. Now I'm going to go and get the little find it, 22 millimeter screw. This has been on the side for a while, and my gorgeous missus started moving it around, and um, well, I wasn't very happy. To say that. Yeah, but what I have found, what I have found is this. Tweezers out. I found some. I found some bits and pieces which you might be interested in. If you're not interested in this, I apologise. So there's the old knackered gear that was rattling around in the bottom of the case when I opened it up. I'm fishing about in a little Ziploc plastic bag at the moment. And there's the little screws that holds the motor in. All right. And if you just compare that to the new gear, there's your new gear. So it's all there. Yeah, so this, here's the old gear look. Can you see that? And can you see, I'll show you the crack. Where's the crack? Oh, there's the crack. Oh, big horror. Somewhere here. Turn her over again. She's as loose as a very loose thing on the shaft. It's like tossing a banana off Boxer Street. Right, so we've got the right gear, that's the main thing. Got the gear. So there's your two millimetre, little tiny posi drive. 
screw on full zoom. Just comparison, there's my finger. There's a screw. Right, so we grasp that, put that down there, move them out of the way, pull this over here, and we should be able to uh, should be able to engage screwing action, and uh, yeah, get it back in. We are. Uh, you've seen these. I'm going to show you these. These are lovely. You thought you weren't going to get the engineer porn on this channel, but you do. Look at that. So you've even got a, a rubber representation. There's screwdrivers in here, and they're kind of, it's a bit strange, isn't it? A bit over the top, but they were expensive. And here they are, little beauties. I should be putting an aeroplane to get this, or a satellite. <laughs> Little manky old bows. But it's the sheer twiddliness of them, they're lovely. Makes me feel like a precision engineer when I'm a complete plot, really. Uh, right, where are we? Screw. Screwdriver. Leave it out half an hour late as I am. So, what's the chances of getting this in first time? Come on, baby, you can do it. Right, so now we have mesh. She is meshing beautifully. No back, tiny little bit of backlash, that's good look. See that? So we have mesh, we have a secure thing that won't ever come off the shaft. So as far as that's concerned, that's that problem fixed. So let's turn her over and give her a go, see what she does. Righty ho, here we go. Right though, here we go. So look, I've turned it over and now if I uh, put the power on, there we are, and then press eject. Ooh, it worked. I can get my cartridge out. Let's see what sort of music he likes. This is a customer's one. I didn't I'm not doing it for this for the money. I don't know how you get them out. How'd you get them out? Look at now you get these things out of here. Because I don't. Do you push this? I see, you push it. That one's empty, look. So you've got a flippy floppy there. And you've got one empty slot. And we have the Carpenters Made in America. Carpenters, number one. Ah, smooth listening in their house, Johnny Mathis, once in a while. I saw Johnny Mathis on television, I think he can manage it once in a while now. <laughs> and number three, what we got? The Bee Gees, love songs, wow this is smooth, I imagine candlelight, bottle of wine. Yeah, I wonder when this is being used, I wonder if this is in the bedroom. And uh, Fleetwood Mac, now that's a good one. Greatest hits. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I like that one. So I'd be in for number one. Is that number one or number six? I wonder. Number one. Yeah, I believe we're back. Number one. That's correct. So you've got six dicks magazine. Right. So when we put this back in, it should swallow her up and then reposition it and um, do the do the business. Oh, oh! Did you see that? It missed it. Blink it. You almost miss it. It's actually going around and stopped. It's not turned on at the moment, the unit, I don't think. No, it's not. So it's parked and ready to go. So if I eject, there it goes. There goes the CD. Push it back in. Well, it's working, isn't it? So that's nice. So our fix has worked. That little motor has done the job. It's fixed. If you want a motor, I've got them in stock. I can't promise always to have them in stock, but I did buy a lot of them because I had to buy a thousand gears because <coughs> a thousand gears was almost the same price as a uh, hundred. Because by the time you tool them up and they they may set up the machine to make it, 
and those Chinese machines or Japanese machine probably the time you switch it on have a cup of tea and switch it off it's made a thousand already so it's only a bit of brass as far as they're concerned but she's meshing nicely I'm not sure if we turn it on now she's gonna I wonder if she'll do an upside down insertion of the cassette I wonder if she takes it lying on her back I wonder shall we see let's just see what happens and it goes in that way up because that's the top so she's upside down at the moment but it shouldn't make a difference there's no gravitational sensors it should work on the space stations the two, there you go you can see it yeah there you go lovely job done so it's all working need a motor get in contact if you want to see the video on how to take this apart and how to put it together and all the rest of the other issues then look at that video don't rely on this one because uh, this is all about the eject drive, all about the motor and the gear, which you can get from me. Thank you for watching. Look down in there, you can see a little titty on the corner. If you're not subscribed, then please subscribe because it rewards me. And um, if you are subscribed, thanks very much and thanks for watching. And if you want anything or any information, leave a comment in the comments box. I usually answer all the comments, providing they're not oh it was so boring you just didn't do it fast enough you know too many words